the middle of last year, they had, um, I, think, I think, something like 20, 26 developers. Yeah. Um, been over, the, over the last six, seven months, that's stepped up to 160 developers. Sorry, uh, wait. So they had? 20 to 26. Where did they find all those developers? It's an ongoing task. <laughs> but how, they found they're paying very well. But they found them in the UK. So, um, yeah, so a couple of guys come over from India. Yeah. Very good guys. Really, all really right. good chaps, yeah. actually. Um, and they've come from all over. But they're, pay, they're paying reasonably well. Reasonably very well. Well, for the area. Oh, yeah. for the area, yeah. Because we're, we're based in the you know, middle of nowhere, really. In the middle oh, nice. of, um, Sorry. Oh, what's that? No, no, I'm okay. I've got, I got my fisherman friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised how much they offered. They, in fact, they offered me more than I asked for. Well, that's good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, 120. Oh my God. 160. 160. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My God, that's a jump. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a lot of work coming from somewhere, aren't it? Fuck hell. I, wish I, I want to talk to their recruiter. You know, like, <laughs> holy shit. There's an investor behind it, probably. Yeah, be heard of group. If there's no investor behind it, there's no way you can keep it up, you know, the, 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 the change, the speed, you know, the investment you have to make. Yeah. Housing and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're nearly with 50 people at one year in the Netherlands. And I mean, I wanted to grow, I want to grow. Sixty-five people. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so I'm not sure how long I'll stay there. But it's been fun, yeah. Not my cup of tea. Yeah. Really. Consider setting up a company yourself. Well, I, I've, I've been contracting the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I quite enjoy doing that. Yeah. Get around the country. Yeah. I was over in Ireland uh, last year. So where do you live? Um, I live in the Midlands near Northampton. Oh, right. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. But it was over, I, worked, I did four months with uh, Accenture in Dublin. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, really an absolutely fantastic place to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's supposed to be the uh, most technically, uh, uh, technology, technically advanced building in Europe. It's the 400,000 people working on it. So I assume there's yeah. one or two people. Working in, in Holland in, in, or in Europe? Oh, I'd work anywhere. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm not sure about you know, how far I can take it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if I just phone her on, the, on, on, the, on the Friday evening, mm -hmm. I'm on my way to Holland for six months. <laughs> and how about remote working from home? Yeah, I mean, I like going into, the, into an office, to, to be honest with you, but yeah. I, I, do, I do remote working as well. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've got some young children, so I just sort of fight myself away. Yeah. Um, I have one three. Mm -hmm. Have not been in the UK. Yeah. Why? And this is, you're going to laugh now. British humour. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in the UK for, I don't know, uh, it was seven months at the time. Mm -hmm. For the first three months, you know, people were taking the piss out of me at work. You know, and then just couldn't figure them out. It was just pretty humor. Like, yeah, you're serious now. You're taking the piss out of me. Like, <laughs> but then I found out, and then I came back. I retaliated. You know, from different perspectives. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, people coming in. All right. So what time should I start? Is it right? Uh, in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. <coughs>
All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, oh, should I have the microphone on? Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Let me do this. Hello, everybody. All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Michel Van Veldi. I'm going to give two talks today. Uh, one is about why Drupal needs marketing, um, and the other one later today is uh, the five benefits of having a local Drupal community uh, being organized as an association. They're a bit of interlinked with each other. So uh, I'm going to walk you through the, this presentation, um, and this is my, my firm belief for over the last 12 years. Um, I am founder, co-founder of OneShoe, an agency in the Netherlands. I started the Drupal community there 12 years ago. Um, I'm a marketeer by background, so, but I fell in love with Drupal, and I'm going to be completely honest here, I can't code at all. But I've been a major part of the community, um, and I'm very proud to be part of the Drupal Board as, uh, Association, now the Association, uh, association Board. Um, I'm standing here on a personal note, not on a, uh, uh, from a board perspective. So this is my personal vision I'm sharing with you, not a vision from the Drupal Association. All right, um, let me walk you through my presentation. Um, I've, uh, when I started uh, uh, with OneShoe, I've also started organizing Drupal CEO events um, and also the CEO network. And what we decided to do was to do a Drupal CEO survey. Um, we've done it now for the last two years, and a lot of really cool information came out of it. Um, so, in 2017, we had 239 respondents, uh, <coughs> basically ranging from directors, management roles, um, uh, working at Drupal companies. Uh, so, so, yeah, it basically companies spanning from around the globe. Um, so, the interesting bit is that we got a lot of interesting results out of it. Um, when you look, uh, there's a geographic difference, uh, 149 people, uh, respondents from, from Europe, 91 from North America, a few from Asia and South America, and we're going to do this um, uh, survey uh, again this year, and we hope to see the numbers growing. Um, so when you look at the services, those companies provided were ranging from, of course, web development, but also support, user experience, hosting, mobile development. Um, and most of the companies were, of course, digital agencies, but there are also software companies and a few marketing companies. And when we walked through it, you know, um, some, some really good figures came out. You know, we're quite proud to see that uh, pipelines were growing, that uh, the project deal size was uh, growing as well, and uh, the, the project win rate was, was very good. Um, but there's also some personal notes where we got out of the Drupal survey, which I'm going to share with you. Um, Drupal will only compete successfully if there's a stronger focus on what the chief marketing officer wants from a CMS. The product and community is stimulated by programmer thinking. Drupal 8, compared to other platforms, shows poorly. And that was one of the remarks that we got from it. And um, for those of you who were here, Yesterday, um, Megan from the Drupal Association says, okay, now we've been focusing a long time, for a long time now, on basically the programmers, but we also should focus on another person, basically another persona, which is the CMO, and basically what their needs are. Um, and there is a different need, you know, uh, programmers, yes, of course, they like to program, they like to code, but 
they have not been focusing on what the CMO wants. So let's look at some other comments. Um, the risk of losing momentum is there unless great UX and update, up-to-date design gets the focus. WordPress is strong on those matters. This is also something that the Drupal Association board took out of it and says, okay, let's have a focus this year on getting our user experience a lot better. Because uh, that's also something the CMO wants um, and the content editor wants to. Um, they increasingly competitive, however, we're seeing Drupal being head-to-head -head with Sitecore and Adobe. You know, for the last 17 years, you know, we all as a community have been working on Drupal and make it better, better, bigger, and, and, and stronger, you know. And it was actually Google who said, you know, this is, Drupal is probably the, one of the most mature open source projects on the market, you know, and we should be very, very proud of that. So, and yes, we are facing uh, com competition from Adobe and from Sitecore, um, and I'll be going into that later on. So, the future is good, you know, and we should be proud of that because we've we all been working very hard on that one. Um, but there's also um, well, some challenges ahead of us. Okay, so before I go um, into the marketing bit, let's have a look at the buyer's journey. Um, the previous, uh, the previous presentation was about the, uh, uh, the buyer's journey, and as a company, we've been focusing on the buyer's journey as well. So you have a customer journey. People, you know, uh, tend to be becoming a customer, and then you should uh, focus on retention and keeping those customers. But before that, there's a whole area in which potential clients um, are looking for a new CMS. You know, or a new platform, or a new tool that helps them publish their content in a very rich way. So, let's have a look at the bias journey. Okay, this is a typical example of bias journey. It all starts with awareness, you know, and we can create awareness as a Drupal community by, um, well, with infographic, with articles, with viral videos, and a search engine optimization, you know, and get them inspired and so they start learning about what Drupal is and what Drupal can do for their uh, company. You know, and this is where basically this demand generation. So when we go to the second phase, that's the consideration phase. You know, we start considering whether we should go for Sitecore, Adobe, WordPress, or uh, Laravel, or whatever solution, okay? So this is where white papers and webinars and e-newsletters, reports, and e-books come in. You know, we can start generating leads. You know, we can do this as a community, but you can do it as an individual company as well. And then, this is where it comes, you know, this, the interesting bit, they have to make a decision, you know. And of course, we want them to make a decision for Drupal, you know. Um, and then you can organize Drupal camps, you know, get them, you know, inspired, you know, in-person events, uh, calculators, testimonials, and that kind of stuff. So. Basically, basically, from awareness all the way to decision, that's nurturing a client all the way into making that decision. So there's a lot of models on the internet, um, and, and you can find if you start looking for it. Uh, it's not, well, so, so, so here it starts. Um, people are strangers to you. They, there are people out there, you know, who are looking for a new CMS. You know, we don't know them. We, we cannot identify them right now. So, but we can reach them, you know, with articles and blog posts, uh, and we can create awareness, you know, and then they become visitors on the website, and you can create case studies and videos, and that will turn into leads, and from leads it will turn into customers, and if they're happy, and that's the whole goal, of course, we can create them, turn them into promoters <coughs> and ambassadors, and then the cycle is around, and then you have to focus on retention, that they will keep using Drupal for the, the rest of their lives. Okay, so the Drupal Association has been um, sending out messages, okay, we want to know who to focus on, you know, because who do you target with what kind of content? <coughs> so that's basically what we call the persona. You know, there's different personas out there, like the general manager, CEO, and he is the most important one. You know why? Because he's the guy who sets the signature, you know. <laughs> In the end, he decides. You know, um, I can tell you stories about how we 
identify the content editor, content manager, the marketing director, IT director, and they're all happy. And then suddenly the CEO says, no, I got another agency, you know, I'm befriended with, and I want them to build it. Bummer. Lost the client, you know, lost the pitch, you know. So the CEO, he's the guy who always sets the signature down the road. But you have the IT director who is an influencer, the marketing director, the content manager, the content editor, product owner, and there's a lot more to identify. And these have, these personas have specific needs. So we have to tailor our stories to the needs of the different personas. You can do it as an agency, but we can do it as a community as well. And we should actually. Um, because every persona has needs. You know, I want to reach this. They have personal wishes. You know, I have a personal ambition from growing from a content editor to becoming an operational manager. You know, people have personal wishes and needs and stuff. And um, they have different authorities. They have different challenges within companies. They have different plans. So we need to tailor our stories to the needs in every step of the buyer journey. When you start thinking like this, that's a lot of stories we have to tell. Yes, we do. And that's all about content production. And so where's the challenge? That's basically the question we're talking about today. <coughs> okay, so who knows the Gartner Magic Quadrant? Okay, Gartner. It's an international organization that does a lot of research, <coughs> paid research, <coughs> a lot of paid research. But there's a lot of <coughs> directors and CMOs. This is recorded, is it? Yeah, it's recorded. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, CMOs, uh, CTOs, and CEOs who look at the magic quadrant and make their decisions. So when we look out there, we see a couple of familiar names. It's Sideboard, the Adobe, they're the leaders, and there's Acquia. And Acquia is, most of it is Drupal. And this is my personal dream. But it's not possible, unfortunately, because, you know, we can't do it as a community. But how cool would it be if an open source CMS system would be up there in the leaderboard? We have to pay a shitload of money. That's not possible, unfortunately. But it would be a cool dream. But, you know, when you look at the leaders, you know, those are basically uh, the guys who, who run the big projects. Yeah. And is this interesting for developers? Yes, it is. Why? Because the big projects have bigger challenges from a programming perspective. You know, I've been telling this to my, uh, my colleagues all the time. I want bigger clients. This is why do we want bigger clients? Well, it's more challenging for you guys, you know, because I can make a, uh, you can go keep making websites for the, the, the bakery around the corner, you know, but that's clicking, you know, and template. That's, that, that's not cool, you know. You want to, guys want to be inspired um, and, and, and be challenged. Mentally, so where's the mental challenge? Well, it's up there. You know, that's where the leaders are. So, okay, let me have a look at a quote from a current RFP I'm on right now. Within the CMS selection, two important themes are central, namely personalizing and automating. You know, um, and they already, I'm fortunate, they already have chosen Drupal. You just want to clarify the RFPs request for questions. Sorry. RFP, RFP. Oh, sorry, request for proposal. Yeah. Yeah. So the it's a request for proposal. You know, they um, uh, there's a large international company that have approached us with a RFP. They want a proposal. You know, they send us a stack of paper about this big, and they have chosen Drupal. Like, yeah, okay. So we're there with like three Drupal agencies uh, now competing to to win the RFP. But they want personalization and they want automating. And I'm, when personalization comes up, I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> this is what Drupal doesn't have yet. You know, we're not good at that. Okay, we have Acquia Lift. Yes, so we can combine it with Acquia Lift, but the Drupal community does not provide tooling to do so. So, okay, several funnels can be set. CMS includes marketing automation. Okay. So we can connect with HubSpot and, and external tooling. That's all possible, yeah. But here you see the wishes from a CMO. Can Drupal deliver this out of the box from a human perspective? Not really. Okay, so there's a challenge. So the next one, you know, um, Adobe. 
So I'm, I'm taking this presentation from two perspectives. Why Drupal needs marketing? From a marketing perspective, yeah, we have to promote ourselves. And from a tooling perspective, so to get things straight. You got a question? I, I think it's one of the strengths of Drupal that it doesn't provide the automation and the personalization. Um, you, can, you, can, you can play the cards that you have the best of breed solution. True, but out of the box, they want a out of the box solution a lot of times. So there is a need we don't fulfill yet. And now we're going to look at Adobe. Okay, so this is Adobe Experience Manager. This is the console management system. And the way they state it is allows you to create, personalize, manage, and optimize online customer experiences. It's all about personalization. And I've been to, a, to a, an Adobe conference. And the things they can do, if you combine all their toolings, you know, it's not just Adobe Experience Manager, but also Experience Cloud and stuff. That's, that's amazing. It is truly amazing. When you look under the hood, because we've been looking under the hood at the code level, not so good. So, so it's not you know, built as clean and proper as, as Drupal is. But I can understand why Nike now has chosen uh, for um, uh, Adidas, sorry, it is, for, for Adobe. You know, um, but I want to, and I see it as a challenge, if we can, you know, uh, create more tooling around, you know, Drupal, that so we can provide and service these clients as well that Adobe is currently doing. And the way they present themselves is a website, you know, it's really clean, make delivering great digital experiences look easy. So, so yeah, um, content, backbone, as agile, as accessible as it is robust. Okay, so have a look at Sitecore. Sitecore enables brands to provide contextual, personalized, relevant experiences that immediately lead to results through every channel and every form of communication. When I'm a CMO, I'm thinking, wow, that's cool. Let's have a chat with them. Okay, so and this is basically how their website looks like, and they're very proud that they show the, uh, the Gartner uh, list as well. And this is Drupal. Launch, manage, and scale ambitious digital experiences with the flexibility to build great websites and push beyond the browser proudly for open source. Okay. Does this tailor the need from a CMO yet? No. And fortunately, yesterday the DA gave a presentation, Megan, and says, okay, we have to change and, um, and the way we look at Drupal.org. Because when you look at Drupal.org, you know, is that basically... Um, Okay, this is me from a marketeer perspective, you know, um, and, and this is a personalized presentation, just to be open. Okay, so Drupal, I'm a marketeer, I'm, I'm finally, I'm at Drupal.org, and says, okay, you know, I'm looking for this personalization, I can't find it, and, okay, so we have critical, multiple vulnerabilities in core, okay, um, and it's available for testing, there's a release for testing, it's, it's not ready yet, isn't it? This is me being totally blunt and honest here, you know. We're not telling the story the CMO wants to hear. It's, I know I'm blunt, you know, I'm, I'm Dutch, and Dutch can be blunt, you know, sorry. But that's me, from a marketing perspective, looking at Drupal.org, our famous Drupal.org. Don't they play the video? <coughs> well, you... <laughs> That's not our thing. Don't, no, personal, uh, no personal comment on that one. Okay, so this is um, uh, Drupal.com. It's getting better, yes. Uh, it's a digital experience platform that knows your web content must reach more than just websites built so you can deliver the right content to the right person at the right time. Okay, and the right devices. This is a, this is a bit like four years ago, you know, what we should have promised four years ago. Um, so we need to change. And Drupal needs marketing in a different way. Okay, and now I'm getting even more blunt. Um, okay, let's have a look at local presence, the way local communities present themselves. You know, because there's a lot of developers out there that present themselves, you know, uh, through communities and personal, personal initiatives, which I like, which is great. But I want to basically give some insights on... Okay, how to tailor the needs of, you know, a broader range of personas. This is the message I want to tell you. 
Okay, so I had, I had to put this slide in. Please don't blame the messenger because the message could be unpleasant. So don't blame me. This is when I went to Drupal.coopen UK. Um, and yeah, so okay, no comment. Um, this is Germany uh, presenting themselves. Uh, this is the uh, uh, the, the, the Drupal, uh, the, uh, I say it's the Drupal community uh, presenting themselves. This is one one of the websites you you will land on, um, but this is another one. And I've been giving this presentation in Germany, and and you know the Drupal, the German Drupal community at first was not really happy that I presented it this way, um, but you know it, it made them click, and now they're rethinking the way they're going to present themselves. Um, I've been working on the, on the Dutch community, and this is this is what I like. You know, but it's a new standard for creating great digital experiences for small companies, multinationals, and everything in between. Not entirely true anymore. You know, we're not Drupal eight is not for smaller companies, but for mid and everything and, and, and larger. So, but this is this is a template that's now being transferred to Germany. Really cool. You know, we're going to share this template in Germany, so we have a broader way of promoting ourselves. In Spain, they, they like to present camps, you know, not talking about what Drupal can do for you. Um, this is France, you know, um, so uh, uh, also community focused, uh, talking about events, not about what Drupal can do for you. This is um, uh, Italy, this is, uh, yeah, no comment. Um, so we need a call for action, guys. Um, and this is basically what I wanted to share with you. Um, if we want to attract new developers, you know, um, if we want to attract major clients, you know, to, to do the really exciting work, we have to change our message. Um, we have to change the way we look at our local presence. So, I'm trying to kick off a new initiative, a few new initiatives here. My second presentation later today will be about that as well, going more in depth into the community bit. But this is um, the first one. I'm not, a I'm not a techie, so I have no idea what technology uh, uh, has to be, from a technical perspective, has to be involved. But let's start a personalization initiative. Let's do so. And so we can actually focus on the CMO and their specific needs. Otherwise, we will lose the battle. Okay, and why do I say this? There are now cloud CMSs on the rise which have personalization stuff already in them. You know, and all you have to do is create a really nice, cool front end with React, and you use the cloud CMS, you have your, all your personalization tooling in it, you know, you're done. So why should we use Drupal? Yeah. Because we love Drupal, and we want to work with Drupal, but there's no personalization. So, let's see. You know, I'm not a coder, so I don't know how to kick it off. But let's see how we can start kicking off a personalization project. Have you got a quick definition of what your interpretation of personalization is? Uh, okay. Um, basically, when I come onto a website, I am a, not a registered user. You know, I'm an anonymous user. Um, I can identify the person with cookies and stuff. And uh, then, when I leave the website, I can track the person, you know, with a cookie, and I can do some ad targeting, you know, uh, Facebook targeting, or oh, lots of targeting possibilities. And then I can inspire the person, and then when he comes back on the website, I can show other content. So basically, specifically personalized content for his specific needs, because we know we've been tracking that person through his bias journey. So, um, yeah, so it would be cool to create an open source project on this one. I don't know how, but if somebody has an idea, let's start a discussion. Okay, um, let's form local associations in every single country. This is what my next presentation will be about. I won't go into that too much, otherwise I will give my presentation next one. You don't have to do that one. Um, so, if you see that in France, in Spain, in Italy, in Germany, everybody's telling a different story um, with uh, a different website, with different templates, 
Um, there's no uniformity in the way we present ourselves. Um, and when I start Googling, you know, and you know, I want to have one message to be delivered across all channels. So, and then we have to start targeting and focusing on the different personas. Could be finance, HR, uh, could be uh, the CMO, the CTO, developers. Developers, 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 yes, we need developers. So, so yes, we tailor basically our content. And the interesting bit is, is that we've been sharing code all over the world, but we haven't been sharing basically templates and marketing material and the way we promote ourselves across the globe. So we're now sharing the Dutch template to Germany, but you know, I don't know if we can share that also with France and Italy and then we have the same website all over and we start pitching in and start making that website better. And then if, for example in France somebody start, writes a really cool article for the CMO, all we have to do is translate it in the Netherlands and Germany, etc. We have a brilliant way and we can you know, grow uh, our market share and grow the community. So let's start sharing content and share our marketing initiatives. And that will lead to uniformity in presence and basically the promotion of Drupal. Um, so in the Netherlands, um, we have a standardized website. Um, we organize the Splash Awards. I don't know if you've heard about the Splash Awards. It's an award show for the best Drupal projects in a country, and it's awesome, I can tell you that. And it, it, it's, a, it's a hilarious evening. Clients will come in uh, to join this Splash Awards and see if they've won a prize, and they all send out press releases and, and, and put it in their newsletters. I can tell you a story about, uh, we won a Splash Awards for work we've done with Drupal for DHL, Parcel, in the Benelux. You know, we're really proud that we, we were the only country, actually, in the world that didn't run on Adobe because uh, uh, DHL globally was working on Adobe. So we were in Drupal. Um, so we created a new website, a new way of thinking, a new way of designing, you know, uh, and actually focusing on B2B, uh, business to business, and business to consumer. And we won an award with that, a Splash Award. Yeah, we organized it ourselves. Yeah, and we had an independent jury looking at all the projects coming in, and we won an award, so it was really cool. And we got into the global newsletter of DHL, and suddenly England says, I want a website like that, and Spain says, I want that website, and suddenly all over Europe, like, yeah, we want a website like that. And the funny thing is, is that we are now working uh, uh, on a global standardized uh, look and feel of the websites, and a new website will be built in Drupal as well. So this is really cool. And how did that happen? Because of a Splash Award. So this can, and it's, it's cool to have an award as well. I can tell you that. All right, um, this is what I said already. Um, okay, let me have a look. Okay, so we organize Splash Awards. We do, do training days. Uh, uh, we, do or, uh, we promote tech talks, promotion of camps, and other events. Uh, and we can professionalize the Drupal presence in each market. Um, so yeah, the Dutch Drupal Association is now sharing the website with the German uh, Drupal Business eval, and, and let's start a discussion on this one, on how we can roll out a standardized way of promoting and marketing ourselves throughout Europe. Okay, um, and this is what I said already, yeah, we have to tailor uh, 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 the message to need of personas and serve them whilst in the buyer's journey. Um, and yeah, uh, content should be shared globally amongst local association and tailored to countries' needs. There's no way we can deliver one message um, which is not tailored locally. You know, every, every, you know, we have over uh, how many countries we have in Europe? Over forty something? A lot. Uh, they all have specific needs. So, uh, so yeah, uh, definitely you should tailor it. But we can do so if every country has a local association. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you in my next presentation what the benefits are of having a local association. So, basically going back, this is my conclusion, Drupal needs marketing from two perspectives. One, from a techno te technology perspective, uh, but also from the way we present ourselves as a community. And yes, we've been focusing on, uh, on developers, which is good. You know, we, we're one of the biggest communities in the world. We're very much mature now, 
but there's a new range of personas we have to focus on, and I would like to challenge you all to, uh, to see how we can set up local associations and tailor our communication to the specific needs of those personas. Thank you very much. Any questions? That's my presentation. Any questions so far? I'm from Pakistan and uh, sort of leading the community over there. Cool. So uh, we have UNC students where I present Drupal with them and um, it's a lot of fun con convincing them for Drupal. Cool. Hard to do at the same time. Yeah. So uh, recently White House has flown away from Drupal. Yeah, but it, it has been a, <laughs> a, a sort of a nightmare for uh, Drupalers, right? It's hard to answer the question now. Because that was the first thing I would present them that even White House is in Drupal. Though the only answer I know uh, of is that now their website is less functional. Mm -hmm. So how to defend this question, especially uh, where a country where WordPress is very much in? Uh, maybe I should turn off my microphone now because I can make a political statement. Um, there's a new guy in the White House. I leave it to that. Okay. So uh, no, the second thing is is that um, look at other companies like um, Pfizer, for example. You know their global stack is built with Drupal. Uh, that's even more impressive than the White House. Yes, the White House being attacked, but every major company gets attacked anyway. So the thing is, from a security perspective, the White House was really cool. Yeah. Um, was it that complex? I think there are more complex projects in the world that run on Drupal. So when we look at the, the showcases you know, um, we have, um, White House is one of them out of a million. And there are, to my belief, better um, uh, uh, projects to convince the people uh, you're talking to. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Cool. Uh, this is from like an awareness space. We and correct me if I'm wrong. We talk about the importance of maintaining the developer community. Oh yeah, definitely. And and there's a lot of energy behind that. Yeah. And there, what you're saying is there needs to be a binary divide between that and marketeers, right? Well, we have to put it on top. We, oh, that, yeah. And yeah, my question top. is, is doesn't the developer base grow organically to begin with? I mean, it shouldn't there be all throttles going towards the uncharted territory. Oh, no. No. How does that not work? Well, um, to my belief, um, we, we definitely should not put all throttles on the CMO. Sure. Definitely not, because if you can't you, win, right, in that space, well, you really in that direction. No. Well, of course you can win if you do, if you're good. No, no, and you don't, it's not about winning, it's <coughs> about growing. Um, and. Yes, we should focus and still focus on growing the developer community as well. You know, uh, yes, there are new faces here, but I see also a lot of familiar faces. You know, and uh, we should be aware that we should not be aging as a community. So we need new developers coming in. Um, uh, why? Because they bring in new ideas. You know, um, I have quite a few uh, uh, young <laughs> hipster developers. You know, who bring in new energy. You know, and at first, you know, they were like, okay, I want to work with React, and I want to work with uh, Angular, and all the, the, the oh, and, and there's cloud CMSs, and, and yeah, it's, it's so cool, and it's hipster and stuff. Um, and then we started looking at, okay, but hey, you can combine React with Drupal. You know, and they're now getting into this, hey, yeah, this is robust. You know, this is, yeah, not this clunky CMS or cloud CMS, you know, which is not, you know, uh, not within the GDPR ruling and stuff, etc. No, and this is kind of cool, you know. So, so we basically taught them that working with Drupal in combination with new technology is very cool. Do we do this as a community already? Not yet. Mm -hmm. So, if we can focus and tailor this, that story, you know, towards the new developers who are coming, you know, fresh out of high school or, or university. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, 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 a challenge for us as well. Um, my business is in the process of rebranding, and uh, I guess my question is how can we as individual people and businesses change our message to fit in with the new initiatives that are being taken? Uh, 
so that's okay. So I okay. This is a, 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 an, an interesting question. Um, I don't know your company. I don't know what is it you want to achieve. But if you start looking at the buyer's journey or the customer journey, as they say it, and you start looking at the specific needs of your potential customers, I don't know what your target audience is. Let's say your target audience is uh, companies within the logistics area, like DHL, Marsk, uh, the, the, the bigger freight you know, shipping companies. You, know, uh, you should identify the needs of the CMO of DHL or Marsk or whatever. And then you start looking, okay, how am I going to present myself? One suggestion though, don't focus on one vertical. Yeah, focus on more because if the economy hits one vertical, your company gets hit. So broaden your horizon. That's, that's, that's it. But if you want to talk about it later on, just let me know. Cool. Uh, um, so you were talking about sharing, getting a more consistent message out and sharing yeah. stuff. And that means you need some sort of uh, overview, governance. And yeah. is that something that you think the Drupal the Association would do, given that they would kind of know what others are doing, because it's otherwise pretty difficult to coordinate? Yeah. Uh, or is it something like the Drupal Business Alliance? What, how would they fit into that? Yeah. Um, well, the other thing is, is that um, I'm part of the Drupal Association board now, and I'm in the governance committee. So I'm bringing this message, you know, I've just uh, told them, you know, and I don't know if they're going to adopt it because it's my personal vision. Uh, I hope they will. Um, so what they can do is they can orchestrate it. You know, they are like, the, the, the Duke <coughs> is, uh, is, is basically the band and the, the association is orchestrating it. They can't create all the material themselves. Um, to my belief, I think, for example, the, the way we do it in Europe now is that Holland starts sharing with Germany, and Germany um, uh, is already sharing the, the way they organize the Flash Awards with Denmark. You know, so we started sharing already. Um, coordinating the same message, yeah, that's something I think the Drupal Association should do. We're all talking, or we are already talking about ambitious projects from the Drupal Association. Um, and so, so how can we basically uh, uh, share this message across the globe? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think they don't, they don't need to be responsible for all the content, but say in the UK, we come up with some really good messaging aimed at CMOs and all the rest of that. Yeah. And, um, that, you know, if we want to share that, how do we do that? You well, know, for, well, I mean, the, the same we, we share can kind of help, you know, with distributing. Well, I think, to others I, and, I think and we should. Discovering others. I'm not sure yet, but I think the way we share code, <coughs> we'd be put it on Drupal.org, and then we start sharing. So, so if we have maybe a separate section on Drupal.org in which we can share our ideas on this subject, it's open for everyone to grab, and that'd be interesting. Yeah, so maybe one way of doing it. I mean, I'm just trying yeah, to give a me, real me practical way yeah. of making it. I'm part of the board now for a couple of weeks, so, so I'm, I'm relatively new. So, yeah. But it's, uh, this is one of the, the ways, um, uh, and, and I think Drupal.org should be the central place, which is it anyway for the community to, to put that. So th there's one, um, one point that you mentioned, uh, what's missing on this variety of sites is a call to action. Uh, and there's one key problem that I, I, I'm aware of, that this is sometimes a big debate in some of the local communities. Yeah. If you were to put a call to action, what would it be? And of course, when like after that call to action, there's a commercial interest. Yeah. Can you talk a bit more about how you would see this working in local community? That's like not one company. Because for Adobe, it's very easy. They, you know, they call one of their salespeople. Yeah. Who gets in put in touch when? Yeah. Someone goes to drupal.co.uk. Yeah, that's a question we had. Um, okay, I'm gonna give away my my, my next talk here. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to ask you a question anyway. Please, please join my next talk anyway, okay? okay. Um, what we did in the Netherlands, uh, I started the Dutch Drupal Business Foundation. Uh, the, the, at, at the time, the, the local foundation was sleeping, only organizing uh, a camp called the Drupal Jam, but not you know, doing marketing uh, at the time. And 
Uh, so we created the Dutch Global Business Foundation and we had ruling. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we create a website and every participant who was paying money to the association, um, that money was used for visiting events and promoting Drupal. So we had a Drupal booth, really cool. You know, suddenly we were next to Adobe and Sitecore and there was Drupal and they were looking at, how can you guys be here? You're open source. You know, like, uh, yeah, but we've united as a community. Oh, wow. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, it was for them. Um, we handed out flyers. So we talked about what Drupal was. It was really cool. And then we handed out a flyer, and all logos were on it. So we had to randomize all the logos, you know, randomize them, and then boop, and they were on the flyer. So we handed out a flyer. No business cards <coughs> were given away. I was not allowed, when I was visiting, uh, was standing on the booth, I was not allowed that I was from one shoe. No. I was representing Drupal at the time, and that worked. We were very strict on that. If other uh, companies would visit the book, you know, they were not allowed to hang around with their own business cards. It was basically solely growing the awareness around Drupal, and it was not growing your business. Because business would come anyway. If you grow the pie, business will come to you anyway. That was the whole idea, and that's how we did it. So if you have a call to action, one of the call to actions could be download a white paper about Drupal, uh, and this is, uh, this is the marketplace, and please find your, uh, your vendor over there. That could be a way. <coughs> yeah? Well, what, what, what I'm thinking is, like, there, if you're comparing that to the kind of experience that you have, for example, with Adobe, just as an example, yeah. where you go there and then, well, if you put your email address, and then you, yeah. like, there, there's all the, the whole personalization, like, the, the kind of things that, like, buyers today tend to expect, yeah. And that's the part of like having the seller be proactive. Yeah. And that's something that can be a bit difficult. Yeah. As if I don't know if there are agency owners here, um, you can put this on your own website. <coughs> yeah. You have your tailor made you know, talk and, and you create your own funnel. Of course, on Drupal.org, we cannot. Um, Adobe, you know, is working with vendors themselves. You know, so they have a, a wide range of vendors they're working uh, with. So, so uh, yes, they're generating leads for those vendors. It could be a model we can look into from a Drupal Associates perspective, but it's getting on the commercial side, and I'm like, I don't want to, you know, go into that area. You know, but um, because I don't want a situation where those who pay the most get the most leads. No, this is this is not open source. There's no way I would vote for that. So, but basically directing them to a marketplace, you know, yeah. And those who share the most code, etc., are on top. Yeah, so, so then you get a model which is, to my belief, fair. So it should be a fair model for all of us. How do you see vendors, uh, vendors that support Drupal participating in this? Not, not agencies, not maybe just users, but vendors on the outside that support the Drupal community. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, is there a I, call to action for the vendors, you would say? Well, um, there is a... Last night, you know, uh, we organized the, the, uh, the agency leader dinner, and I was walking home, had a bit of too much wine in my body, and, you know, you get creative walking in the snow in, in London. And I came up with the idea, okay, that there's two ways we can approach it. You know, we can also ask if the larger clients like uh, Fighter, uh, et cetera, if they want personalization, okay, let's chip in Sponsor. sponsoring X amount of money. But then we have to write uh, out an RFP, okay, which agency is getting the deal to write and, and uh, to write the code uh, for the personalization tool or should be a shared or combined experience. This was late at night with a couple of wines in my head, <coughs> and I'm like, okay, but this is something we should look into. I think that the, the vendors, oh, the, 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 the actual end users, like the, the larger companies, if they can chip in, Fighter have been donating X amounts of, of hours and, 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 and dollars <coughs> already in uh, Drupal, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, but if we can f create an initiative, global initiative, you know, uh, in terms of personalization, yeah, definitely awesome. 
So that would be your recommendation to pick a topic. So we, we sponsor events, we contribute code, yeah. you know, those things. But you're, you're saying maybe a vendor could take on a lead and yeah. drive it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, if this happens, wow, that would be, that'd be awesome. Very awesome. Yeah. It could serve the global community big time. Right. Well, the community serves us as well. So, I mean, it's like Brian was talking about in the keynote this morning. How do you find a way to yeah. increase your yeah. way to get that? Yeah. yeah. I was curious if you had thoughts around that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, when we say Drupal is huge for huge websites, right? By promoting Drupal. Yeah. There is always a question asked of me uh, that is uh, how long budget wise, right? Yeah. So, uh, do you know for uh, some Drupal websites, to, uh, which is uh, uh, which are to the top level budget wise? Like I know is uh, one which is a Canada uh, city website. There is a city website in Canada. It is one uh, million dollar site. Yeah. So, promoting Drupal and then uh, mentioning budget of that particular website is a key also. So, do you know such websites? Um. Well. Um, I've no idea, but I know Fiverr is running all their websites on, on Drupal, and I think that's a bit more than a million plus they've invested. I think, but um, I um, I'm not aware, and I'm not aware of, of budgets of the big companies. But I know there there's some some global companies that use Drupal that have been spending a lot. Um, I I've never used that argument. You know, for uh, uh, convincing my clients, um, I can tell you a story um, on how I convinced one client. Um, it was a logistics company, and um, they wanted a new website. And you know, we, we got the pitch brief and stuff, and I was looking at it, and we had to deliver, you know, uh, an offer, you know, on Friday. And it was Wednesday. Look at it. It's like, okay, you know, we got this piece of paper here, and I just had to call the client. It says, okay. Um, could you please tell me what the business case is behind the website? And the general answer when I ask that question is always, uh, what's the business case? It says, what do you mean by business case? Well, you're investing X amount of money. How much money do you want in, you know, for return on investment? He said, never thought about it. Can you help me? Yes, I can. So I came up with the idea. I knew, I imagined that this logistics company would get in a lot of telephone calls, you know, because of people, where's my package, you know, and what time will it be delivered, etc. So I imagined they had a thousand calls each day. So what if, what if we created a website that could lower those calls by a 10%? So 100 calls less each day. So. I'm aware of what happens within call centers, and the average call cost is between six and eight euros. So 100 calls a day less would save them, and I was imagining 800 euros a day, times seven, times 52. And I made them an offer for a website which was costing 50,000 euros. It says, here's your business case. You can present this to your upper management. And he said, damn, you're good, you know. He says, the one thing is, it's not eight euros, it's six euros per, per call, you know, and maybe if we can create a website with an FAQ on it and serving all the needs of those callers, we can lower it even more. I got the deal. So I'm not talking about numbers now, I'm talking about the business case. Well, this is interesting. So when you look at a, a request for a proposal, when you start looking at the business case, okay, how can we make money with this investment? It's a different approach. But that can be an interesting thing. Yeah? Cool. Any more questions? Okay, I, I really like that you brought that up. And I, I'm a copywriter. I don't know how to code. And I also mm -hmm. do marketing. Yeah. But I have Maddie here who helps me yeah. <laughs> with the code. So the thing is, I, I always try to explain my, my customers that we need to showcase the benefits of the business and maybe that would be something that Drupal should do like show the benefits not the features because we are showing the features yeah. which is great for developers I mean yeah. we have a great community and all yeah. but we're not showing the 
that how yeah. um, the world or how the company yeah. could benefit from Drupal? Yeah, in, in our personal presentations we give to our clients, we have showcases. Mm 